today we are having Minister of Agriculture uh, here with us to discuss about how the Latin America and the Caribbeans are doing and what they are looking from India, especially uh, during this trip. So uh, today I just wanted to know because India is also a country which is mostly dependent on the agri economy and the technology that you have been discussing last uh, few discussions in the meetings. So you have been focusing on agri tech. So that is crucial for you as well to take advantage of that being here. So how do you see this trip is going to help you out for a longer term? Well, first of all, I want to thank you sincerely for having this discussion with me. I see it as one of first importance because it is very important that during our visit here, we spend the time to speak to all of the stakeholders. We have to speak to civil society, we have to speak to the private sector, because it is only after that that we'll be able to fully engage the, the value chain. I would just like to begin by giving a synopsis as to what is the situational analysis in Latin America and the Caribbean, and particularly in the Caribbean, and I'm using St. Vincent and the Grenadines as an example. We're currently moving away from only primary production where we produce raw material and export and of course this is part of the colonial construct where islands like St. Vincent and Grenadines, Grenada, St. Lucia, Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, Barbados were seen as countries which were production bases for raw materials whether it was banana or sugarcane and in some instances cotton and an arrowroot, and it was exported in bulk. So historically, there was very little value addition taking place in these islands. We have witnessed over the last two decades a removal of the preferential treatment for many of these commodities being exported. And uh, we are witnessing currently in Latin America and the Caribbean, and particularly so in the Caribbean, an extensive approach to diversification in that we are looking at growing a significant number of crops in order to reduce our food import bill and also in order to increase our exports. Brings me to India. We have done an analysis as to some of the countries in the world that have done extremely well in terms of adding value to their primary products and uh, India is shining as an example. So we are here from the Caribbean, we're here from, from Latin America, we're here from St. Vincent and the Grenadines to see how we can obtain the necessary technology to be able to import that to St. Vincent and the Grenadines so that we can begin to add more value to some of our primary products. I'll give an example. We have significant quantity of mangoes, which will go to waste every year. Of course, we, we eat a lot of the mangoes fresh. We export mangoes to neighboring islands. But in a situation where we have a, a race to ensure that we have food security and food sovereignty, and that by 2050 we have enough food to feed the global population, it means that we have to reduce our losses, um, not only post-harvest losses, but the significant quantity of food not being even harvested in these islands. Because if you harvest it and it is kept fresh, it will, you will experience significant spoilage. So with the technology that we have already seen here, we spoke to several persons from the private sector in, in the meetings, they will be doing missions to Latin America and the Caribbean to have a better appreciation as to the scales. Because my country is 110,000 persons. We have 10,000 registered micro farmers in the general scheme of things. And uh, our small holdings on average uh, approximately 1.5 to 2 acres per farmer. Um, some farmers are doing subsistence agriculture. Some persons are doing backyard gardening to the extent that they're doing backyard gardening even to enter into supply chains. So what India brings to the table is a sophistication 
as it pertains to the technology for value addition. Other than that, we are also seeing whereby India has the, the human resource capacity because having the machinery is one thing, being able to use the machinery is the next thing. And we want to work with the government and people of India so that we can have that technology transfer. So it's not only uh, collaboration in goods, but also in, in services. We also know that you have some superior varieties of fruits and vegetables here. And those var varieties and cultivars we would like to have exposed to us, of course, from the private sector to private sector in and grain beans so that they can establish that trading platform. When this is too much huge gap, you know, the, this is a, the, how you speak, it resembles like Indian situation. You know, India is also suffering to the same situation. You know, it's like gap of demand and supply gap. Also noted that there is a need for improvements in maritime logistics. And we had a, con uh, a conversation with a logistics supplier who is going to explore the possibility of having one or two vessels move goods to enter, to bridge the... Because we currently, we do not have an effective inter-island transport right. that is regular between among the islands. And uh, we have a, a task in CARICOM to reduce the food import bill by 25% by 2025. But it can only happen if we're able to move the food from one island to the next. Because in some countries, we are overproducing, in others we are underproducing, but the connectivity issue is... is